Hello everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we'll be seeing about first come first serve scheduling algorithm. In CPU scheduling algorithm, we'll be having four types of scheduling. Uh, they are like uh, first come first serve, shortest job first, priority, and round robin. Uh, in this video, we'll be particularly uh, covering what first come first serve scheduling algorithm. How FCFS work means whichever process comes first. That process will be served by uh, served first by the CPU. So whichever process comes first, CPU will be taking the process. CPU will uh, complete the process and then it will go to the next upcoming process. So this is how the FCFS works. So as discussed in, in the problem format, this is how the question will be given. So here we are having five processes and the arrival time of each process and bust time of each process. Arrival time is nothing but at which unit of time the process is going to begin. It means at which unit of time the process is going to enter into the CPU. And the bus time is for how many unit of time this process is going to reside inside the CPU. So that is your bus time. So this both things will be given in the question and they will be asking you to find the uh, turnaround time and waiting time of each process. So whatever may be the scheduling algorithms, the first thing you will be doing is you have to draw a GAN chart. So this is how the GAN chart will be. So in first come first serve, how you will be drawing a GAN chart means you have to primarily you have to consider the arrival time alone. So here in the table, you look which process has been start at, started at the zero unit of time. So in the GAN chart, the unit of time begins at zero. So whichever process is arrived at zero, that process should be served by the CPU. So you consider this box as a CPU, that is each process is going to get inside the CPU, it's kind of uh, thing. So this is how you'll be uh, drawing the GAN chart, begin with a zero. So check which process arrived at zero. So in our uh, problem, P3, process 3 has been arrived at zero. So from the arrival time or unit of time zero, P3 has entered into the CPU and the next thing you have to consider is for how many unit of time P3 is going to reside inside the CPU. For this you have to consider the bust time of the process. So for P3 the bust time is 3 unit of time. So it begins or arrived at 0 and it resides till unit 3. So 0 to 3 the CPU will be occupied by P3. The next thing uh, moving to the next process, the thing you have to consider is here P3 has been completed at the unit time of 3. So at the unit time of 3, some other process should enter into the CPU. So CPU is idle now. So any other process which is, well, is beginning at unit of 3, they can enter into the CPU. So now in the given table, you check whichever process has been arrived at the unit time of 3. But in our example, no process has been arrived at unit of 3. So what you have to do means check the next unit of time. 3, no process has arrived. So go for 4th unit of time. So arrival time 4 is for P1. So at the arrival time of 4, P1 comes. So the time between the 1 unit of time from unit 3 to unit 4, this phase will be called as a idle phase of the CPU. So CPU is not going to process any process. It is going to stay idle. So this is the idle phase for the CPU. So at the arrival time 4, P1 comes. So P1 comes inside the CPU. And now you are, you are going to check for how many unit of time P1 is going to reside inside the CPU. So for this you are going to consider the burst time of P1. So burst time of P1 is 5. So arrived at 4 and burst time is 5. So you have to sum up the unit of time. So 4 plus 5 at the unit of 9. P1 will be completed. So CPU will finish off the work of P1 at the unit time of 9. I'll repeat again. So P1 arrival time is 4. It begins at 4 the unit of time. The bus time of P1 is 5 that is given in the question. So 4 plus 5 the completion time of P1 will be 9. So P1 is over now. The next thing you are going to check is after unit time 4 whichever process has been arrived. So now you are going to check the table. After 4, at the unit time of uh, 5, process P5 has arrived. So the next 
priority or next process should be uh, served to the CPU is P5. But the thing you have to consider here is now we are at the unit time of 9. So before unit time 9, 3 process has been arrived. So you can check the table. So after 4th arrival time, at unit time 5, P5 has arrived. At 6th unit of time, P2 has arrived. Again at the 6th unit of time, P4 has arrived. So the CPU is now at 9th unit of time. So before 9, already 3 process are arrived. So among these 3, you have to serve any one at a time. So how you will be doing means you are going to check the arrival time of each process. Now we are pending with P2, P4, P5. So check whichever has arrived first. So comparing to 6, 5 has begun first or arrived first. So you are going to give chance for P5. So after P1, P5 is going to be served. Now the arrival time or the beginning time of P5 is 9 as per the Gantt chart and not per the table. So 9 and how much of time is going to spend inside the CPU is you are going to check for the bus time. So 9 plus 4 the completion time of P5 will be 13. Now the next process you are going to consider is the next arrival time after 5 is 6. But at this point of view two process has been arrived at the same arrival time that is 6. Now you will be having a doubt like whom I should serve first. Because we will be considering the arrival time for serving the process. But in this case both are arrived at the same time. So the next thing you are going to consider for serving is the process ID. So now P2, P4 is there. So now you are going to check the process ID. Whichever process ID is smaller it means that the process are arrived first. So comparing, to P, comparing P2 and P4, P2 has the smaller process ID. It means that it arrived first in the queue. So you are going to serve P2. So after P5 we are serving P2. P2 starts at the arrival time of 13 or on the unit time of 13. And the bus time of P2 is 4. So 13 plus 4 the completion time of P2 will be 17. And finally we are left out with only one process which is P4. Now you will be serving the P4. The arriving time or the unit time of P4 is 17. The bus time is 2. So 17 plus 2 the completion time of P4 will be 19. So this is how you will be drawing a Gantt chart. After drawing the Gantt chart the thing you are going to do is you are going to find the turnaround time and waiting time for each process. So this is a question given and this is the Gantt chart we draw. And this is the formula for calculating turnaround time and waiting time. So turnaround time will be completion time minus arrival time. Here you write the process ID and completion time for each process. So how to check the completion time? Consider P1. So in the Gantt chart check where P1 resides. So P1 is here. Check the right side of P1. That is uh, the completion time resides in the right side. So P1 has been arrived at 4 but completed at 9. So the completion time of P1 will be 9. And uh, for P2, consider where the P2 is right. So P2 is here. So the completion time of P2 is 17. Then for P3, it is 3. And P4, it is 19. And P5, it is 13. So this is how you will be uh, taking the completion time from the Gantt chart. After uh, uh, finding the completion time, you will be checking or you will be doing for turnaround time using the formula completion time minus arrival time. So arrival time is already given in the question and completion time uh, we have uh, found it from the Gantt chart. So P1 the completion time is 9 that is there in the table itself and minus the arrival time will be there in the question. So minus 4 which is 5, 9 minus 4 which is 5. So turnaround time of P1 is 5. We see another one example. For P2 the turnaround time will be the completion time is 17 minus arrival time of P2 is 6. So 17 minus 6 it is 11. So similarly you will be calculating the turnaround time for remaining process also. Coming to waiting time the formula for waiting time is turnaround time minus bus time. So turnaround time just now we found the turnaround time. So we will be having it is in, the, in this table and the bus time will be given in the question table itself. So for P1 
the waiting time will be uh, turn around minus bus time turn around is 5 minus the bus time of p1 is 5 so the waiting time of process 1 is 0 waiting time of process is 0 uh, for another one example you can consider p3 uh, p3 completion time is 3 minus p3 bus time is 3 so it is 0 you consider p2 completion time of p2 is 11 minus uh, bus time of p2 will be 4 so 11 minus 4 the waiting time of p2 will be 7 so by using this two formula you will be calculating the turnaround time and the waiting time finally you will be summing, summing up all the uh, turnaround time and waiting time for calculate the average so average turnaround time will be you sum up all the turnaround time of all the five process divided by total number of process. So here total number of process is five. So we are dividing it by five. So that will be the average turnaround time. And waiting time similarly, you sum up all the waiting time of the process divided by total number of process. So that will give you the average waiting time. So this is how we will be uh, doing the first come first serve. Draw the GAN chart. The main thing you are going to consider is arrival time. If the arrival time is same, you consider the process ID. So whichever process ID is smaller, you will be considering it first and you will be drawing the GAN chart. And by using this two formula, the turnaround time and waiting time can be calculated. So the remaining uh, scheduling algorithms will be discussed in the upcoming videos. Thank you.